the proposed 2025 CMS policy and looks like the overall payment is going to cut by 6.5% in 2026 which is around 1.35 billion compared to 2025. So does that mean it's a loss of money to providers which means further reduction in the staff for the reduction in the initiatives and close locations and turn away from the patients. You know, in terms of impact, you ask any expert in the field, when you cut social net programs, really uh, serves a wide group of you know folks in the society, uh, it will have a larger impact. The way the whole system is set up is hospital system uh, will raise the prices to stay alive. It means the payers, the insurance companies has to put the bill the insurance companies eventually will go back and increase the premiums for the rest of the company. Mm. Because of all insurance risk, risk based policies, so the risk level, they raise up the risk and it affects the entire population. Today, we are diving deep into home healthcare, worth $1.3 billion in annual US revenue and it's growing rapidly with 7.5% a year. A typical US health system, it juggles more than 16 plus data systems and mostly all of them are isolated, right? And now add 25,000 caregiver providers on road. And the fragmentation is like pretty massive. The industry is so sensitive. So what does that fragmentation feel like at Veda and uh, how you are trying to integrate all of these systems? Our opportunity to optimize the workflows and the data flows in the company is a lot more complicated mm. uh, because we have different EMRs used for different kinds of services we provide on the ground. It will work that a nurse spends uh, in home health is the amount of time they spend on documentation when they're sitting in somebody's home. It's about uh, 40 to 50% of their time sitting in somebody's home, not a providing care. The issue is not about creating a AI agent or AI solution to automatically capture notes. The issue is the EMRs or the EHRs in this field is so antiquated that you know some of these systems are you know, built in the 1980s, 1990s. Mm. You have moved from some legacy system to Databricks Lake House and adopting more of kind of Medallion architecture, right? Tell me more what Databricks is able to provide which you are not getting in your uh, legacy uh, database. I would say top factors why we chose Databricks. We can segregate uh, compute from storage, right? Which, which is the new modern uh, way of how people need to, you know, process, consume data and also process them. Most obvious thing is performance and speed, right? Mm -hmm. You can't get around it. And what we uh, figured out was with the technologies we had with SQL Server and Snowflake and the way that we were implementing them compared to a Databricks is like night and days difference. Databricks is already in place, which will help in getting a cleaner data. And then what kind of use cases are you going to put on top of it to make it impactful for the organization? So we are considering a, uh, to modernize the core business data that we manage. We are in the process of building an entity model around it using AI techniques. We are trying to mainstream our capability of self-service back to the end user. Yeah, that's very important. And you have already started doing a lot in terms of automations and implementation of AI cleaning data and all of that. So tell me more about some of the top tips or lessons which you have learned while doing all of this process. We don't go out and put a technical solution to solve a business problem. We have a very methodical way of how we actually approach where an AI solution makes sense, where a human solution makes sense, where a hybrid of AI and human is the most operating sense. What I have seen in other companies prior uh, to Vira is there is a tendency that they'll take the most shiny object that's out there in the market mm -hmm. and force fit it to your business. It will never work. Right. Especially in healthcare. I was also talking to one of the CIOs of uh, healthcare. He was also quoting something similar. He mentioned that, see, our main focus is serving the patient yeah. and making sure that the return rate of the patient reduces. This buzzword of AI automation, it shouldn't change our main focus. People, those who are sitting on legacy system, those who are not ready to adapt any change and, you know, the technology which is growing so fast. How do you manage a balance between these two?